Hello everyone and welcome back to Sandbox EDB. Today the EDB is pleased to present the launch of a brand new shuttle system on mission ETS-10A replacing the previously scheduled ETS-10 which was with the old Martin shuttle. This orbiter with its distinctive Ford swept wing is named Libertina after the Discworld goddess of the sea, apple pie, certain types of ice cream, and short lengths of string. It is carrying 40 tons of fuel and oxidizer to Hoffman Station, with a total cargo mass of 45 tons, including the tanks. In a slight change to the usual pattern, the commander for this mission is actually the engineer, Christina Kerman, who is engineer on ETS-4 and ETS-9. The pilot, Donnelly Kerman, is on his first trip into space. And here we go, picking up the countdown. T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, engine ignition, and engine ignition on the boosters. One, and liftoff. We have liftoff of ETS-10A to Hoffman Station, carrying vital fuel for future missions. Initial phase of the launch is good. Preparing for roll program here. Donnelly Kerman on his first roll program. Let's see how he does. Looks like the shuttle is fairly balanced. A little bit of a wiggle there. So, faced with the prospect that the Aquarius SSTO could replace the shuttle system, the EDB has designed this shuttle, which has a capacity of 75 tons, compared to the old shuttle system's 25 ton capacity, and that far outstrips the Aquarius SSTO's 20 ton capacity. And the right way they have managed to do this is by replacing the three skippers on the shuttle with a single KS-25, which is a massive weight savings, uh, at a cost, of course, and then put a mainsail on the external tank. The result is a net increase of 700 kilonewtons of thrust. However, this shuttle runs its rapiers on launch, so on launch, the total increase in thrust is 1,420 kilonewtons, and so a very significant amount of additional power at launch. Also, on the boosters, the Mammoth engines have been replaced by clusters of four KS-25, which produce the same amount of thrust and have the same ISP. However, do not require the adapter between a 2.5 meter tank and the 3.75 meter engines. So since they don't require that adapter, that is uh, weight savings as well. So here we go, getting ready for booster separation. Of course, it is much more expensive to have four KS-25s than simply having a single Mammoth engine, and their gimbling has to be limited. It is limited to 25% here, separation, and, uh-oh, it seems as if the boosters have taken out the outer parts of the wing, in fact, the forward sweeping parts that make the shuttle distinctive. Uh, consultation is occurring in mission control about what to do about this, but standard procedure is to continue to orbit and rendezvous with Hoffman Station. The shuttle currently has a remote controller, a probe core, inside the cargo bay, and so the crew will be let off at Hoffman Station. They will stay at Hoffman Station, and the probe core will attempt to bring the shuttle back down. So that is the plan currently. You'll see that the external tank, top tank, is locked for balance. And here we go at 60 kilometers. We can see the current orbital situation. It, actually, the apoapsis is quite high, and we do want to use as much of the external tank fuel as possible, so the shuttle will pitch down here in order to keep going for as long as possible without getting a high apoapsis. It should be noted that this shuttle has already been tested by the live streaming division of the EDB. However, that division, as we see the top tank being unlocked, that division uses Kerbal Joint Reinforcement and uh, also did not have parachutes on the boosters. Perhaps the reason why the boosters did not separate properly here is either because of the lack of Kerbal Joint Reinforcement or the addition of parachutes to help with recovery of the boosters. Okay, here we go for external tank separation. External tank separation looks good. Okay, and the internal fuel of the shuttle is unlocked and the uh, KS-25 is off. It'll be just the rapiers from here on out. And the Libertina shuttle currently has quite a gap between itself and the station, so it'll keep the periapsis low to about 75 kilometers here. Uh, a little bit more than that, and there we go. Okay, after a day and four hours in orbit, the shuttle was able to plot a rendezvous 
with Hoffman Station at a cost of about 70 meters per second and so here is that burn coming up the shuttle has Werner thrusters for maneuvering but also a redundant RCS mop propellant system that wouldn't be able to do docking but we would be able to hold the pitch of the craft in the atmosphere to some degree not as well as the Werner thrusters but would certainly help okay so here we go the actual separation will be 3.9 kilometers at that rendezvous point so here the shuttle is turning around to aim at the negative relative velocity marker and it'll burn off 150 or so meters per second to rendezvous with the station and of course the intention is to use the docking adapter on the station that the previous oh dear uh, there seems to have been a problem with the orbiter. We're not entirely sure about the nature of the problem at this point, though it seems like Donnelly and Crescent are safe. Structural failure between... It seems like everything. This perhaps might be a side effect of importing the craft from the live streaming division which was using Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. We will have to see. Um, that it was the first time the EDB has ever done that, importing a craft from a Kerbal Joint Reinforcement Supply Division. Uh, in any case, it looks like the commander and the pilot are are safe, and well for now, and they have a docking port available to them. They also have the redundant mod propellant system, and so they use the mod propellant now unlocked in order to try and rendezvous with Hoffman Station. They have that docking port at the top available to uh, even dock with the station potentially. Not entirely sure that's possible with just the RCS ports they have right here. However, the RCS ports weren't sufficiently efficient and so they had to abandon that plan and the EDB will have to send up another mission to handle the rescue or some tug to the shuttle. Uh, options are being reviewed at this point. The shuttle opened its docking port and disengaged SAS in order to conserve electric charge awaiting rescue. Um, well, uh, a disappointing day for the EDB, a very costly, costly failure there and we'll have to see what to do about that. Possibly building, rebuilding the shuttle from scratch will work instead of using the craft file from the live streaming division. Uh, but uh, the, the potential for the shuttle is high but uh, it seems like the risk is also high. We will have to see whether Donnelly and Crescenta can get back home safely for Christmas and uh, we hope you'll tune in to developments from the EDB and uh, news on how that goes. On that note we'll have to cut short our coverage of ETS-10A as options are being considered. We hope you will support Donnelly and Crescenta by pressing like. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave those in the comment section below. And we will see you as soon as we get more information.